Hey everybody, it's Paul, and today we're going to be shooting a quick video on how to keg your beer. So the first thing you want to do is take your keg and get it completely cleaned and sanitized. So what I do is I rinse it with warm water, fill it up with some PBW, give it a good soak for about an hour, another good rinse, and then we'll put some star sand in there just to sanitize it. Once that's done, uh, you want to take that and purge the oxygen out. So easiest way, uh, just take it to your kegerator hook it up to CO2 and then just burp it. I usually do that for about 30 seconds give or take. That should get rid of most of the oxygen. The best way would be to fill it up with star sand, have a jumper going to a second keg that's empty, push out the star sand with CO2 and then you would be 100% sure that you've purged all the oxygen. That's a bit of a pain and I've, I've always found that just uh, purging that oxygen out for 30 seconds or so, we'll do the job. Okay, once you're ready, you're gonna wanna purge all the uh, CO2 out and then get your lid out of the way. Take your tubing, whether it's coming from um, a valve like this or your auto siphon, you're gonna wanna get it in there. And you're gonna wanna make sure that it's all the way at the bottom of your keg. You do not want any splashing or anything like that, so you wanna make sure that's all the way down at the bottom. Sometimes that's a bit tricky because when these tubes are cold, they might coil a bit. So you just want to check and make sure that it's right at the bottom. Next, uh, I like to use finings in the keg. I use BioFine, you can use gelatin. Um, I just find it easier than cold crashing. You can just cold crash right in your keg. So I'll just take some of this. I usually add about a tablespoon or so of BioFine. So if you don't have some sort of valve like this on your fermenter, you should be using an auto siphon. So to prime the siphon, you would just push down on the plunger a couple of times. That'll start your siphon. If you're using that, make sure you start about halfway down your fermenter. If you start at the bottom and start priming it, you're most likely going to start getting all the sediment out. So start at the halfway mark and then move it down as you go. If you have a valve like this, make sure to take off your airlock. Because if you don't, as soon as you start, it's going to suck all the liquid out of your airlock and into your fermenter. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but you'd rather avoid it if you can. Once that's removed, open up your valve. And then it's going to take about 10 minutes or so for all of your beer to transfer in your fermenter. So that gives you a great time to relax and have a homebrew. So you may have noticed when I started the uh, transfer that we were getting a bit of oxygen here and that's because the tubing I grabbed was just a little bit too big for the barb on this SS Brutech brew bucket so I turned it off, added a clamp and there we go, no more oxygen. You do not want oxygen in your beer, it is very bad. So we'll just let this continue to transfer and we'll go from there. Okay, so once your beer is transferred into your keg, you're going to want to purge any headspace with CO2. Um, the other thing I'll mention is uh, get yourself some keg lube. It'll make your life a lot easier. I've already put some on the O-ring of the lid itself. It's going to help it seal into place easier. And then just putting a dab on your in and out posts will help you take the uh, connections off a lot easier. So once that's done, make sure you hook it up to the right thing. Most kegs it will say in somewhere around here, but if it doesn't, the gas in is always going to have a notch. If you look down, you'll see notches, whereas the uh, outpost does not. That should be enough to purge the headspace. And then you will, uh, if you have a, some star sand or something like that, just put it around the top of the lid, check for bubbles. Uh, that's where a lot of people will lose CO2. 
Um, I know this keg seals good, otherwise I would have just left the lid loose and applied the CO2 pressure holding it up and then that way you can kind of wiggle the lid into the right spot so it doesn't leak. And then once that's done, you're, you're good to go. You can disconnect your gas, put this into your kegerator. There's a few methods to carbonate. The best way is to, depending on the length of your lines and the temperature of your fridge, it's going to vary, but rule of thumb is 12 PSI for roughly two weeks. If you have about eight feet of uh, tubing between the keg and your tap. Um, if you're kind of anxious, like most of us are, I found the best way is to hook it up at about 30 PSI for give or take three days, put it back down to 12, purge, you should be about 80% of the way there and you can drink your beer, it'll be fine. Um, some people will hook it up at a high PSI and then just shake their keg, roll it on the ground. I mean, do that if you'd like. Uh, I've never had really good success. Usually it's over carbonated and then it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, plus the beer is still really green, so it's not really my preferred method. I usually do either two weeks at 12 or if I'm in a rush, 30 for about three days bring it down, give it a day or two, your, your beer will have time to clear and you'll be drinking it sooner than the other methods. So that's all there is to it. Make sure that your keg is clean and purged of oxygen. When you transfer, make sure it doesn't splash the bottom of your keg. Purge the headspace once it's transferred and then put in your kegerator and just wait for it to carbonate. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up on social media or swing by the shop. And other than that, relax, don't worry, have a home.